Okay, my name is Carson Coutre, and I'm staff at the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council. I'm the staff lead on the Commercial Electronic Vessel Trip Reporting Action, and the outreach coordinator for this action is Andy Loftus. And the focus of this webinar recording today is to have two software demonstrations for commonly used EVCR applications. So we have Fran Karp here from Harbor Light Software, and she will provide a demo of ACCSP's application called eTrips Mobile. And after that, Jay Hermsen from NOAA Fisheries will demonstrate their Fish Online eBTR application. So with that, I will turn it over to Fran Karp. Thanks, Carson. Let me get myself set up. Okay, can you see my screen, Carson? Yes, that looks good. Okay. So I'm going to give you a short demo of eTrips Mobile 2. It's an ACCSP application. It was originally built by fishermen in New England uh, for use on tablets, and, uh, and it was used up and down, it's currently used up and down the East Coast, a couple hundred uh, fishermen are using it now. So I'm going to go through a couple screens with you here and some of the main points about eTrips. Uh, most of the questions we get is what device and platforms is eTrips 2 available on? It is available on phones and that's both Android and iOS phones. That's also tablets. That would be iPads, iPhones, um, anything like that. And also Windows 10. So if you have um, a Microsoft Surface or a laptop running Windows 10 it will be available there. And they're all available through your device's store. So you would just go in, log into your uh, either Android Play Store or the Apple Store, and you would search for Safest eTrips Mobile. And that would pop up and you would download it and log in uh, and go through those steps to set it up. So what I'm going to do is go through some of the features and benefits about eTrips Mobile 2. As I said, the first and I think the most important feature is that it was built by fishermen. You'll notice as I walk through the demo that there's big buttons, and that's because the fishermen wanted to use this while they were out on the water, some of them, and their fingers were larger, so we have the, the big buttons built in. Also, the colors. You'll notice that uh, the colors, uh, the dark background with the, the bright lettering and the bright buttons. Um, we did a lot of different renditions um, with the fishermen, and they came back that this interface to them was the best to be seen both at night and during the day. So again, you'll see a lot of features like that built in. Um, the other thing that we do is we fill in quickly used fields with what we call favorites for quick picks. And I'll show you how to set those up. And then once you do a trip, the next trip that you do, those favorites will auto-populate. And it just makes the whole um, reporting process easier. The next thing I want to just hit upon is our support. Um, we are a 24-7 help desk. If you call our help desk, you will get a live person um, in the United States and someone that is on our help desk. Fishermen can give feedback within the application. And I'll show you that when we do the demo, a quick little feature. Um, that is monitored and that goes to a large group of people. So we really take your feedback and we support um, you know, all that feedback and we really want you guys to, to give us your thoughts. And then continued updates and fixes. As you give feature requests or things may not be exactly right, we continue to put out fixes and updates. So as long as you are updating the application, you'll get these new fixes and updates. OK, this is what some of the captains, I just pulled this real quick. This is what some of the captains have to say about eTrips Mobile. The one I wanted to point to is the, the one in the middle. This was from the captain of Old Salt, Old Salt Charters in Rhode Island. Um, he had never used a tablet before. Uh, he picked up an Android tablet and was able to use it after a few lessons. 
and uh, he came back and said the reporting is easy. I am happy as a clam at high tide. So I just wanted to, to show you that someone who has never used the application is able to pick it up and, uh, and, and get used to it and be able to put their reports in. Okay, I did want to show you real quick um, our support information. If you need support or you want videos, um, anything like that, you can go out to harborlightsoftware.com and you'll see here right in the middle, eTrip support. If you click on this page, it's going to give you everything that you need. Um, right here is our 800 number. You can call for technical support. You can also email us. You can get some frequently asked questions here. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that there's quick, short videos. We try to keep the videos two to three minutes long. And depending on which platform you're using, you can actually click on it and it'll go through setting up your favorites, putting and sending a report, um, and all of that. Okay, so let's get out of this and go through a quick demo for you. What I'm going to do is log in to eTrips Mobile. And you'll see here that it's downloading your permits, federal vessels. So whenever you're connected to the Internet and you log in, it's going to download all that information and keep it up and current. As you'll see here again, the big buttons, big, bright buttons, easy for uh, someone to click on and use. I'm going to go through real quick some of the uh, features before I get into entering a trip. You'll see up here in the upper left-hand corner, there's a menu button. If you click on that, it's kind of like a, a glossary, and you can get to different things. So one of the things I spoke about before was favorites and setting up your favorites to make uh, putting a trip real quick and easy. So I just want to touch upon that really quick. This is where you would go and put in your favorites. And you can see if you click on categories that these are all the different categories that you could set your, uh, your favorites for. So if you had favorite species that you fish for at certain times of the year, you could put them on or take them off. This will take an entire list of species and put it to just the ones that, that you use most commonly. You can always search. Say you, uh, you catch something that's not on your favorites list, you can always put in a quick search, find it, and then pick that species. Again, things like gears, reports, um, dispositions, all of that is set up in your favorites. So really take a few minutes uh, when you first set this up and set up your favorites, and that will uh, definitely help you as you do your reporting. Okay, so back to the home screen. You'll see here that we have a logbook, and then you can enter in a completed trip or track your new trip. The first thing I want to talk about really quick is your logbook. If you click on your logbook, this is where you're going to see a list of all of the reports that you've sent in. You'll notice here there's a clock, I'm sorry, a cloud with a, an arrow. That shows you that that report has been submitted and everything was okay with that trip report. So you can scroll through and if you wanted to look at anything with that trip really quick, you can just click on the trip itself, scroll down, and that's going to give you all the information about that trip. If you need to edit anything within that trip, you can click up here on the Edit button, and you can edit a trip really quick, and you can click on anything that you wanted to edit. If you want to edit the catch, you would click there. So again, pretty easy to navigate from your logbook. Now let's go back, and I want to explain to you really quick the difference between a track year trip and an enter completed trip. Some of the fishermen wanted the ability to use the app while they were out on the water um, and not have to fill in things like, when did I start my trip? When did I end my trip? Their dates and actual times. Um, if you track your trip, you would just hit a button on uh, the application itself to start trip. And that's automatically going to enter in the date and time of your trip. When you're done, you would click on End Trip. And again, that would auto-populate that information. Additionally, what Track Your Trip does 
is if you are using it while you're out on the water and say you're pulling a, a fish aboard and you put that entry for that fish in, it's going to mark for you your GPS of where you caught that fish. Those GPS locations will stay with the app itself. That's just for you so that this could be a true electronic logbook so that in the future, if you wanted to go back and look at something that you, know, you did um, a few weeks earlier, you could go and you could find out where you were during that trip. Um, the enter completed trip is doing a trip uh, when you get back, filling it in, when you say you're at the dock, you're completing it and you're sending it in. So let's do that. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through uh, entering a completed trip. And this is just a, uh, you know, a fake trip. So forgive me if uh, I don't know my mesh size and things like that. So you would click on Enter Completed Trip. And then you would pick your trip type. And let's do a commercial trip. Now you'll see here that I have three vessels. These are three that I picked from my favorites list, and I set these as favorites. So say you had a, a few vessels within your fleet you can report for any of those and you can list those as favorites. Let's just pick bare bones as our vessel. And that's automatically gonna auto-populate my permit. You'll see here in the bottom right-hand corner that that will become uh, available for you to click on. It won't be grayed out. When all that information on that page is complete, that will allow you to go to the next screen. So let's do that. And then this is your trip details. You'll see here that you can put in a trip name if you wanted to. Um, some people put uh, a date in there or they put, say, the last name, if it's a charter trip, of the group that they're taking out, um, or they may put just a number, first commercial trip, second commercial trip, something like that. That stays with the uh, device. That does not go up. That's just for you and to be able to easily pick it out within your logbook. Okay, so everything else is gonna auto-populate for you. Your crew count, and it's gonna auto-populate from the last trip that you put in. Your fishing trip, fishing trip with efforts. You could change that if you wanted to, but if you're doing the same trip. And then your port, if you were leaving from a, a different port, you could click on that and change that quick enough. And then your notes, again, this is just for uh, the fishermen for their trip. If you wanted to put notes in about this trip, you could do that here. But you'll notice that the button down here is already lit up, so you can move to the next page. From here, it's going to ask you your effort details. And if you're doing uh, a similar trip, it's going to fill in the things again from the previous trip. So let's go through and fill in the information uh, about our gear. So let's say that we had a gear quantity of 12. We had gear sets eight. And again, this would correspond, the gear sets, the gear quantity, the gear size, um, this would correspond with what is on the current VTR uh, form. And if you have any questions, you can just ask us about that. And again, if everything else is the same, you can put in your average depth, and then you'll notice here, location. And you can put your location in one of two ways. If you want to actually put it in and type it in, you can do it that way there. Or the fishermen asked for a map. They wanted to be able to click on a map and be able to change their location. So this map will automatically pick up where you were fishing last and say you were fishing this area. You would put that in and you'll notice that that lat long automatically pulls that in for you. Again, notes of the effort, you can put those in. Otherwise, you can go on to the next screen. And this is where you would change the date and time of your trip. So let's just say that we did this trip yesterday. And let's say we started this one at 1 o'clock in the morning. And we came back at about 2.30 p.m. 
And in that time, we had about six hours of fishing effort. And then you'll see that the bottom right-hand corner, again, will be lit up, bringing us to our next page. You'll see your favorites. This is where we set our favorites from that long list, so you can scroll up and down and quickly get some favorites. So this is where you would put your catch in. So let's say you had some goosefish. And that is not moving on my screen. It looks like my screen is not moving on here. Let me get out of this real quick. Okay. So, back to where we were. Say you um, caught some goosefish, you would click on goosefish, and then your quantity, say, would be 1,500 pounds. Your disposition, you could click here if you wanted to change your disposition. And again, those are based on your favorites that we picked before. But let's just say this one was food, so we'll keep it at food. And then you can offload it straight from this page. So if you said, I took that 1,500 pounds and I sold that to a dealer, you could click on the plus button. And you could say, I sold that to the dealer on the third, and that dealer was DNS Fisheries. Again, these are all picked out of your favorites, so you could put in any favorite dealers that you'd like. And then just hit Create. You would save that catch, and let's say you discarded some goosefish. So let's say you discarded 150 pounds of goosefish. You could say dead discard and hit save. And you'll notice here that your summary of all of your catches are here. If you wanted to go in and change any, you could just click on the Catches tab here and then click in this box and you'll be able to change it. Let's add in some cod. Say we kept 150 pounds of cod and we kept that as food. Now we've already made our offload, so all we would have to do is say, yes, I sold that cod to the same dealer. If it was a different dealer, you would do the same thing. You would click on the plus button and just click on a different dealer and show that. But let's just say that all your fish were sold to the same dealer. You would hit save. Again, you could see all of your summary here. If that's it and that was uh, your catch on that trip, you would click on the offloads button. And then you could see here you have no more catches to offload. If you wanted to look at your offloads, you could click here and it would show you what was offloaded. If that's all set and there's no changes, Click on Trip Report in the bottom right-hand corner. And then you'll see here where you click to certify that this information is correct and true. Click on that box there, and then just click Submit. And that's going to send the report up to the ACCSP, on to GARFO. And if there are any errors coming back, this is where they would be but it would show here that it's successful. So if you go back, you'll see that your trip now has a cloud with a lock on it. So uh, that is how you would put in a trip report. Um, other things I want to go through real quick. If you go to the menu and then you scroll down to About, if you click on here, this is where you'll be able to send feedback to us. Um, and you can also restore eTrips to uh, databases. So let's say you start off on a tablet and you want to move to your phone. You could take your database so you don't lose your logbook. You would take that um, and just send it up to the cloud, and then you would pull that back onto your phone. Currently, they do not sync between devices, but that's something that we've had a request to do. 
Um, but again, uh, your feedback is really important to us, so um, send us your thoughts. Uh, here, if you scroll down, you'll see messages. If you click on messages, this is where you can scroll through and if there's any messages that you need to know, um, they'll be in this area here. Uh, and did not fish reports. One thing I, I didn't mention but I will is that uh, eTrips also uh, takes care of your in-state reporting. Um, for most of the states. So if you have any state reporting that you have to do or did not fish reports for the state, you can also do them on eTrips as well. Um, and I think that is about it. All right, great. Thank you so much, Fran. Um, if you want to go ahead and unshare your screen, we can move on over to Jay Hermson with NOAA Fisheries. Thanks very much, Carson. Thanks, Fran. Great demo. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to be demonstrating today is another electronic vessel trip reporting application. This one coming out of uh, the Greater Atlantic Regional Fisheries Office, GARFO, of NOAA Fisheries. And it was an application created originally on the web and then ported over to what's referred to as iOS, which is the operating system that runs iPhones and iPads. And currently it's only available either in the web version through your Fish Online account or on, uh, for iOS devices for iPads and iPhones. Uh, but we are working on coming out with an Android version and improving the web version. So, to use Fish Online for iOS for the iPad or iPhone, you first need to go to the Apple Store and download the application. And um, if you search NOAA Fish Online at the Apple Store, you'll see the app. And there it is on the right there, NOAA Fish Online. And you can open that from there. And then You'll also need a NOAA Fish, uh, Fish Online account. And you can get that when you download the app by either going to Account Support and Help, this button that I'm tapping, I tap below. And you can create an account with third tab down. Or you can call the GARFO IT Service Help Desk at 978-281-9188 or email. And um, you'll be able to obtain a username and password for Fish Online there. I'm going to go ahead and log into the app. So I logged in now, and when you go to the home, this is the home page for NOAA Fish Online, and I can see on this tab, currently open trips and failed submit trip reports, and I don't have any submit failed trip reports on file at this time. And then down at the bottom of the page, I can see that these are the open trips, or and I have also a submitted tab at the bottom. So I can look at submitted, submitted trip reports um, that I've previously put in on this device, and I can see both submitted trip reports and edited submitted trip reports, and I can edit, from, I can edit any trip report I've got from this screen. In the upper left-hand corner of the app, you'll notice there's this device on iOS applications called the Hamburger, and that shows me a menu which has the Fish Online homepage about Fish Online, which gives you the Fish Online versions that you're working with. And that's important when, if you contact Help Desk, they're going to want to know the version and build that you have of NOAA Fisheries Fish Online. And then any messages you might get, old Garfield VTRs, and if you want to sign out of the application, you can sign out of the application from the menu. So, I'm now at the home page, and I'm just going to go through uh, relatively slowly how to put in a new VTR. And um, notice, you'll notice that over time, it'll, uh, this is going to be slowed down for demonstration purposes, but you'll rest assured that it's, 
it's pretty straightforward to put in a vessel trip report in the app, depending upon the level of trip reporting that you're doing, whether or not it's complicated or not. But it's usually pretty fast. So to start, you're going to go to the plus symbol in the upper right-hand corner and tap on that, and that will start a new trip. And um, the way Fish Online works is very similar to other Apple applications, if you're familiar with them, where you get uh, the opportunity to select something in an open screen. So this was the vessel name, search by name, federal permit number, or vessel hull number. And you can tap on any one of those three boxes under those three subjects. When I tap into that box, it comes up with a list of uh, favorites. It comes up with a list of vessels I've input into the application prior. And if I tap on that name or permit number again, it's going to give me a, a list of all of the vessel names and permit numbers I can choose from. It's basically the entire permits database. And by starting out either with a vessel name, and I'm going to be using the vessel, the test vessel sustainable catch for this demonstration, you can start typing in that name, and it'll narrow down as I continue to type in the name, the actual vessel that I want. So I want that test vessel, and I'm going to tap next in the lower right-hand corner. And when I tap into enter date and time sale, that box, it's going to give me a wheel at the bottom, and it'll give me the date time sale uh, right now, but I'm going to go ahead and set that back a few days. And I'm going to use the wheel at the bottom to do so. And I'll set it to Saturday, November 30th at 2 p.m. and tap done. So that's my date time sale. And I'll give you the trip type, and it's going to be a commercial trip. And again, I manipulated the wheel at the bottom after trap it, tapping into the trip type field. Number of crew, three, tapped in there. Next, and this is step four, four, starting a new trip. So I just review this. I don't have the anglers because it's a commercial trip. Number of crew, three, daytime sail and vessel. So I'm going to press save, tap save in the bottom right-hand corner. And I'll be able to, it will take me back to a reference trip report where I'll see the top part of what used to be the old paper VTR at the top. And then if I'm happy with that information, which I am, I'll go ahead and put in what we refer to as what the application refers to as an effort, which is essentially questions um, essentially questions 7 through 16 on the old uh, vessel trip report page. And it, it, it corresponds basically to what you used to fish, how long you fished, and where you fished. And so that's what I'm going to do. At the lower right-hand corner, I'm going to tap on effort. And I'll start out with a gear code, again, tapping in the field. It gives me some um, gears and gear codes that I have entered prior to this one. But I'm going to go ahead and put in Sync Gilnet again. When I tap in there, I get Gilnet Sync. And I'm going to put in my gear quantity, which for Gilnets, of course, is the average number of nets per string. If there are any questions about that, you can consult the paper VTR instructions. And um, any of these fields that correspond to effort are um, explained for each gear type in the fishing effort information by gear type table on page 10 of the VTR instructions. So my gear quantity is the average number of nets per string. And my gear size is the average or the size of each panel, put 300 feet in. And the mesh size is going to be a large mesh uh, uh, monkfish directed trip. It's going to be 10 inch. So I have that, and I'm satisfied with those numbers. So bottom right corner, I'm going to tap next. And I'm going to put in my chart area. And when I tap in, I have 21. And my number of hauls, which is the total number of strings hauled per trip. I'm going to say all 20 strings on this trip. And my tow soak time, which is the average soak time per haul. I soaked each, each string about 26 hours and no minutes. And I fished it. 20, oops, and I fished at 20 fathoms. So I'm happy with that. And I could, next, next I'll put in my latitude-longitude format. 
put in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And my latitude, type that in. Now you'll see at the bottom of the, the page there, I have the option of using the device's GPS. So if I'm on location and I'm reporting my, my fishing location there, um, I can tap on that use GPS. And for, for gill nets, the location I'm going to report is the, the majority of my fishing effort. And for gill nets, that means the location of the start of haulback for the string with the most panels. So I can go ahead and use the app to do that. but um, if I if I need if I'm reporting the trip later on, or I want to just type in the latitude longitude, I can do that and not use the device's GPS. So in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to tap save, and I'm happy with all of that effort information. So I'm going to associate add catch to this effort, and same thing. When I add a catch item, I get a species code box, and I can tap inside that box. It'll give me a list of species that I've reported prior to this on Vessel Trip Reports, setting up a, a favorites list. And if I tap into this search by code or name, I can go ahead and tap in monkfish. I have that. I can either do um, head-on gutted monkfish, or I can just do monkfish heads, livers, or tails, depending upon the VTR code. And I'm going to go say I kept 3,000 pounds, discarded. 150 pounds. I'm going to save that and add another catch item. Yeah, I caught, I'm going to choose from my favorite list this time, spiny dogfish. Tap on that. So I kept 1,000 pounds and discarded 250 pounds. I'm going to save that. And that'll be the, uh, the total catch for this particular trip and effort. So if I'm happy with all this. I've got my effort catch report as I scroll down for effort one of this trip. I'll tap trip report on the, in the upper left-hand corner. And so far, so good. Now I'm ready to report landed or offload information, trip sales. You'll see at the bottom left there. There are no trip sales on file. So to put those in, I'm going to tap landed in the bottom. And <clears throat> it'll first ask me what my date and time landed was. I'll say it was. Um, let's say 24 hours ago, or 12 hours ago, excuse me, and I'll say done to that, save, and then after I landed, I'll put in sales. That's in the bottom, that's the um, sales tab on the bottom of the page. And I have a number, a couple options here at the bottom. I can either view trip sales or save the entire catch, or I can tap on the monkfish or do spiny dogfish to, to, to input uh, what I did with that particular species. And for this demonstration, I'm going to say I sold these two species to two different dealers. So I'm going to tap on monkfish, and it's going to show me all the monkfish I landed on the trip. It, if you have multiple efforts with multiple landings of monkfish, it would add up all of those in your quantity. But in this case, it says 3,000 pounds available for sale. So I'm going to go tap on that and say I sold all 3,000 pounds to and when I tap on the dealer name, it says search by name or permit number, or it gives me some disposition codes or dealers that I've sold to in the past. But I'm going to go ahead and tap on tap in the search by name or permit number box, and I'm going to start typing whaling city display auction. And there it pops right up, and I can tap right on that. And that's, I off, I'll say I offloaded, not in Boston, but in Point Judith. Shipped it over to New Bedford. There's Point Judith. And I'll say I sold it today. And I'm going to save that. And so it will confirm to me that the monkfish was sold to the Whaling City Display Auction on December 4th. Now I can tap on the bottom to select more catch for sale. And it will show me the spiny dogfish. Has quantity available 1,000 with quantity sold zero. Whereas the monkfish is quantity available zero because I sold all 3,000 pounds to or reported selling all 3,000 pounds to Whaling City Display Auction. So now I'm going to tap on Spiny Dogfish and I'm going to select Catch for Sale. And I'm going to say I sold all 1,000 pounds. But in this case, I'm going to use 
after I tap in the dealer, I'm going to just use my favorite, the favorite there, Dave Hendrigan Seafoods Incorporated. Tap on that, and that will fill out the name and permit number of the dealer. And the offloading port there was also Point Judith, so I'm going to tap in search by name, Point Judith. And tap on that, and that, that was also sold today. So if I'm happy with that trip sale, I'll tap save in the bottom right-hand corner. If I tap view trip sales, it will it will not record this, so it's important to tap save in the bottom right-hand corner. And here are it's telling me all the sales I had and who I sold to and when. So if I'm happy with that, and I am, I'm going to tap done in the upper right-hand corner, and I'm reviewing the whole trip report as I put it in, the initial part, starting the new trip, trip efforts, and trip sales, what I caught and what I did with the, that caught, that catch. And then I'm going to tap, if I'm happy with all that, I'm going to tap sign in the bottom right-hand corner. And it's going to ask me to confirm a few things, including the date and time sales. And I'm happy with that next. And the trip sales. And I'll tap next in the bottom right-hand corner. And I certify that the vessel tripper information I'm providing is true, et cetera. So I'm going to check the box on the bottom left. And uh, for the demo, I'm not sure if you can see this on your screen, but there's a box next to this statement. By checking the box, you created the terms above. And I'm going to tap that, and it puts in a checkbox. And that lights up the Submit button in the bottom right-hand corner. And I'm going to tap Submit. And it will give me either a, a, a message that the report's been accepted or that the report has not been accepted, and generally it'll have some language in there about why the report wasn't accepted. For example, the date the date landed was prior to the date sale, or the trip wasn't long enough, or or something else that, that wouldn't allow the trip to be accepted. I'm going to tap OK, and I can uh, air print this if I want to in the bottom right-hand corner. I'll tap on that. I'll just press the back button in the upper left-hand corner now. And that um, will show me, if I tap in the submitted, it will show me the trip that I just reported here. And the submitted trips on this report, on this submitted trip reports on this device, the date sailing that we reported was Saturday, November 30th, at 20, 2019. So uh, that's the NOAA Fish Online demo. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact the GARFO Help Desk, um, either via email or, or um, with a phone number. And um, thanks for the opportunity to demonstrate GARFO Fish Online. Great. Thank you, Jay. So I'll just add that um, we really appreciate Fran and Jay being here to provide these demos. And we hope that this recording is helpful and informative for anyone getting started with electronic vessel trip reporting. So thank you all.